Ladies and gentlemen, we're so excited to have Heartthrob from season three of F Boy Island, Marco Del Vecchio. How are you? Hey, what's up, my guy? Cheers, man. Thanks for having me on. Of oh, course. Yeah. Thanks for doing the show. Well, now, I, I met it. you at the F Boy Island premiere, of course. Mm -hmm. um, I'm friends with Katie Thurston. Uh, what was that like, uh, meeting old Katie Thurston on the show? Did you know she was going to be on beforehand? Or? I did. She was the one cast member I knew that was going to be on. And it was, you know, instant attraction, obviously physical, she's beautiful, but her sense of humor and just her, you know, accepting of everyone, right. that really was the most attracted to me. Uh, uh, so. The question everyone wants to know, let's start off hot, is she a good kisser? Is she a good kisser? Now, despite her <laughs> saying that I wasn't, she is a good kisser. And I, I don't know if the producers told her to say that about my lips. Yeah, how that does that there was feel no chemistry, like... But I felt the chemistry, trust me. That was my favorite subject in high school. Uh, and I felt the chemistry. As long as you felt the chemistry, I mean. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah I mean, how does that feel? You're watching it with your friends. You're go, you know, you're kind of uh, excited for the show. And then you're like, we're, we're, at that point, we're like, oh, shit, this is going to go sideways. Yeah, I spoke so <laughs> highly of her. And then <laughs> I really felt disappointed. But, I mean, throughout the season, as uh, if you watch it, and for the people that have watched it, uh, I gain her uh, likeness back, if you will. Dude, uh, that's the Rhode Island way. Now, I don't know it if you is. Know this. I'm from Rhode Island, too. No way. That's right. What part? Portsmouth, did you go to high, Portsmouth high School. Bro. Oh, wait. You, did, did we talk about this? I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I saw Bishop your, Hendrickson. I, Bishop Hendrickson. There yeah. you go. All boys school, right? All boys, yeah. Yep. They, they used to torment because you played football there, too. Yeah. Yeah, I played yep. football. We had a much smaller team. But when I, I graduated, oh, four, oh, three. So I'm a little bit older than you, I think. Okay. When did you graduate? Uh, 13. Oh my gosh. I got yeah. 10 years on you. 10 years. Be a lucky. I can be coaching. You don't look it. <laughs> I'll take yeah. that. I will take that you look compliment the same age. to the bank. <laughs> Bishop Hendrickson. What's the mascot there again? The yeah. Hawk. The Hawk. Hawk. There it is, folks. You played football. What else did you play? I did. I played football. I ran track, all state and both. No big deal. Uh, and then I um, did a little chess team and was student body president. Like I didn't drink or smoke till uh, smoke weed uh, until I was 21. You know, wow. I was the good kid. I went to all the parties and stuff, but I just, I know I was so focused on getting like a D1 A scholarship for football, which I eventually got to Brown University. Uh, but I passed that up to do Legally Blonde, the musical, at Tabor Academy, which is a prep school in Massachusetts. And then I moved out here to go to CalArts. Oh, so you didn't go to Brown? I you, didn't. No, okay, no, got no. you. I was going to say, you, that, that would have been Ivy League to F-Boy Island. That would have been a nice pipeline. That would have been a beautiful pipeline right there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. I, I uh, A quick Google search will show off your abs on a few different <laughs> magazines. I mean, you're looking good out there. I mean, my diet is fucking black coffee and grilled chicken, There you baby. go. Look at those quads you got. Oh, you those my are, guy. Those are, I don't you know if you guys you can see those guys. Show them the calf muscles. You don't fuck around. When I you don't have, fuck around, you baby. That, you know, and you live on a hill, so you must just walk up and down the hill all day. Yeah, I do. Just for fun, you know. God damn. <laughs> I tell you, I'm having a baby, so I'm in the opposite side of oh, no health. Where I'm just, well, thank you. I'm eating. I'm. Eat, it's so true what they say that you eat what your, you know, your wife's all excited to eat all the junk food. And you're like, let's go. So I'm just, I've been like teen stoner energy just all the frozen foods from trader joe's like all the things yeah like, trader not, joe's has those snacks yeah, i had i had pepperoni mac and cheese oh and i didn't even know they went together you might as an italian but i was like this i is, do not that's that sounds yeah. pretty artificial. that well, sounds like olive garden you, italian you probably haven't had a carb in a few <laughs> so. do you get do you get uh, in shape for F Boy Island. I mean, you know you're going to be on a show that's you know very yeah, sexy and all that. For sure. I mean, I'm an actor model as well, so I pretty much have to stay consistent with my diet and fitness year round. Uh, but I always dreamt of preparing for a role in mm. acting and stuff. So I did kind of watch what I ate specifically for uh, going on F Boy Island. But pretty much, I'm staying the same year round. How much? time did you have between getting cast and then when it aired it oh, wait, i'm sorry when it started shooting it was a two-month process so we filmed all of july at calamigo's ranch in malibu mm -hmm. so it really wasn't even an island uh <laughs> and, and then so my friend chanel hit me up on instagram saying you'd be perfect for the show and i don't know if that was an insult or a compliment uh and then through a series of like background checks personality tests psychological exams uh, I got cast and so two months. What's like, what's in the psychological exam? Like, what are they It was like you? 300 questions of like yes or no. And it's like, do you think about crossing the street and oncoming traffic? <laughs> like, yeah, it's stuff like that. It's like, well, I mean, am I yeah. late for a spot? Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah. That's interesting. So pretty uh, tedious and honest questions, but uh, somehow they 
figure you out through that. And okay. then you have like a 30 minute exam with a psychiatrist who is just, it was very scary because I didn't know what he was thinking and he wouldn't tell me because he can't. Oh, they're all like poker face too. All poker face. Yeah, handsome like, fellow. And you're like, am I winning this? Am I winning this? Have I? Did I win the show? Do you want to bang me? Do you want to bang me? Because I will. Um, you know what was most fun of watching the F-Boy Island premiere was watching you, uh, the cast, you guys, were all watching it for the first time. A lot of guys seeing themselves on camera for the first time. Yeah. And then they'd be, a, a, you know, a confessional and then everyone would start cheering. I just thought it was <laughs> so much fun to watch, like, a guy starts kissing, you know, one of the girls and then everyone's, you know, punching each other. I was yep. like, this is what I love about like manhood is you almost feel more excited for your buddy than yourself seriously though it was really nice seeing uh, all of us uh, be on the screen especially for people that haven't ever been on the screen they're from the midwest they don't necessarily act or model and such so that was the camaraderie on that show is so fucking true when they say when we get cast like this is going to be your family forever but yes there was drama on the show don't get me wrong but everyone pretty much likes everyone at the end of the show oh yeah and I, well, i'm sure and you also just from the beginning of the show had some tearful moments were you surprised that like it was actually getting real dude to be completely honest i what i did go i'm a nice guy it's out now uh, and I did go on the show looking for a girlfriend. My ex-girlfriend cheated on me, unfortunately, and you know I did want to find love. And I did develop real feelings for Katie. I seriously did. And I didn't get the nature of the show in the beginning. And I wish I did because it's basically a sarcastic bachelorette. It's making fun of other reality shows, especially with the editing and such. So... Uh, I did develop those feelings. I did cry. I was mad at Jared. Uh, and yeah, so <laughs> there was some real stuff on that show for sure. Now, let me ask you this. Yeah. Is anyone hitting on Nikki Glaser? Like, uh, what's, like, what's her? <laughs> I'm just waiting for her to dive in as contestant or something. I think, yeah, right. That'd be fun. Like, I'm a celeb, F Boy Island. I mean, it's a bold move. She's right there. She's yeah, being all she's sexy and pretty. Funny, pretty. Uh, super funny, which is the most attractive. Uh, I mean, there'll be like sly comments that they probably won't show uh, like, <laughs> on the cut, uh, but. I, I mean, because I always think of that at Bachelor where you got Jesse Palmer, who now he's, you know, married. Oh, fuck but it. But it's like. Stud. 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 Absolutely. I would. Stud. I would. Yeah, and you hear, I mean, there used to be stories of Chris Harrison when he was single that, you know, even, you know, I mean, and there's, I mean, I, I always talk about Bachelor because it's just such a long running show that all the drama spills out, but there's stories of producers that end up with contestants because, you know, you're sharing this, this sort of like, it's almost like theater camp where everyone's making it. Yeah, you're just yeah, in like yeah. a very specific group. Mm -hmm. uh, but your group, I mean, F Boy Island's relatively new. F Girl Island, I think, will uh, premiere next. I think they've already shot yes, that. Yes, right? like January. They shot that right after ours actually a few yeah. weeks after so, so you're part of um you know the new age of dating reality shows that kind of takes the glossy fantasy out of bachelor and makes it a little bit more fun exactly uh and then cw picked it up after hbo so hopefully they continue to make new seasons and stuff because i think it's a real fun show for people that haven't watched it all of my friends basically uh they started watching they're like i'm gonna continue watching that even it's a without fun show it. it's a fun show it's a fun show i mean and of course it's got it's produced by some of the guys that were the most successful from the bachelor you on and bill yeah yeah and do you know do you um bill used to do i used to do open mics with him have you no way. i don't think he does them anymore but does he ever talk about that no i text him here and there for like cuts of the show so i can post to my instagram but bill was the nicest guys in the world but uh i don't know i don't know if he's still doing like mics but i know he was a comic for sure i know josh is josh waldron who was a producer oh yeah i know josh don't yeah. tell he uh produced those shows yeah yeah all right so how does how do you sort of um decide to do quote-unquote reality as an actor like were you worried if this was going to help or hurt like what was the process like for this for, uh, and like on a career level yeah so when i first came out here i was always told if you want to take acting seriously, do not do reality TV. Because I think Matt Damon said it in an interview a while back. Once you know too much about someone, it's tough to believe them playing someone else. Right? Yeah. So Matt Damon's day to day, if you know his day, how do you expect him to be the guy in Goodwill Hunting? Right? So I was always told that. But nowadays, with the social media era, there is so much content being thrown at you, especially by these famous actors on social media, that it doesn't really matter anymore. You know, if you're talented enough to portray another role, you can. So that's what I want. I want to do it all. I want to host. I want to be a reality star uh, on reality TV. If I'm a star, I'm a star. Can't help that. There you, you know go. What, what are you going to do? You know, oh, yeah, come on. You look good come on. the camera. Come on. Uh, model, act. I just want to do it all. And I essentially, I want to make people laugh. And feel I mean, something. they all, they're all, it's all about opening as many doors as possible. And yeah. 
And if you gain some followers here, some followers there, look, I mean, in the end, if that's what gets you cast on a Lifetime movie because you got a little bit of an extra following, every movie is trying to sell themselves. Exactly. And that following really does, like uh, Logan Paul, that whole thing, all these like Viners that started getting these movie deals. But then again, I think casting realized after a bit that uh, followers don't translate to uh, asses and seats, especially with the streaming platforms and stuff. And if they're a bad actor, you're a bad actor and the movie's going to flop. Yeah, I mean, that's like, it's like a tip ball. Like, you've got it. If you're, if it's a tiebreaker, you might get it over someone with a smaller following. Exactly. And that's as best as it'll ever get you. Is, is yeah. And I think the same thing is, well, sort of true with stand-up. And I think with stand-up, there's so many funny comedians out here that if I have the ch- choice between 10 guys, I'm either going to do my buddy a favor or I'm going to choose the guy who's got a bigger following because at the very least, mm-hmm. it's going to attach me to his following yes. and just help me out. And it's all kind of... That's what's tough about LA is it's like all about everyone's kind of fighting for themselves, but you kind of have to just build that. Like, you got to be funny. you got to get stage time, but you got to build yeah, your, your own audience. Yeah, and hang's a big part of it, too. I had Will Burkhart in my podcast, and he was like, just like when you're in the green room with these comedians, if you're, like, cool to hang around with and stuff, you know, because a lot of L.A. is just the relationships that you've built, you know, the connections that you've made. Yeah, and if you're going to, you know, do a gig with someone in Ontario, you're like, all right, who do I want to spend the next six hours driving with? <laughs> uh, casting, what casting directors think, like, how is my day on set going to be like with this guy? You know, especially with commercials. Yeah, and if you're really, if, like, you're great actor you could also be it's like if you're a little creepy but you're a good actor it's like all right you just do your job but in most cases nobody's good enough strong enough charming enough to deal with the bullshit that comes along with it so yeah. it's like just be professional it kind of comes yeah. down unless to you're it. like jared leto because he's got it all and like yeah i put up with the skunks and trailers for him for i sure. heard tim allen was horrible on home the, improvement no tim well allen? maybe on, ooh, ooh, maybe on home improvement but i heard he's <laughs> terrible in the new santa claus miniseries on disney Oh, yeah. really? Uh, Casey Wilson, I think is her name. She was she started with him and she said he wouldn't look her in the eye. He would storm off set. And I'm like, really? this is making me want to watch this even more to find out that old Buzz Lightyear. Is yeah, like Buzz, Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I mean, and he's a funny example. as like, a, you know, he got busted uh, for selling cocaine as a comedian in his early days. Oh, uh, Tim Allen? Oh, yeah. He's old school. Oh, I didn't know that. Tim's old school. He's a thug. Yeah. Dude, get that. I was hosting at the improv the other night, and guess who popped in? Uh, George Wallace. Really? The original freaking George Costanza. That was the character was built off of. Like that. It was built for George Wallace. Yeah. The you know the, the old, very older black, uh, African American comedian. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Right. Why didn't he get it? No, he was Jerry Seinfeld's roommate. Oh. Yeah, oh, so, like, so it was funny. based upon... Rather. Isn't it funny who, like, will just show up in Los Angeles? Yeah. It's just absolutely insane. Well, um, I actually... I want you to know this. I had you on my list of people I was trying to get on my show here. Oh, good and, get. Good get. And things sped up a little quickly. Yeah. After last week's episode, which was <laughs> a fantastic story of... Um, overcoming, you know, sort of being robbed. Uh, and then, of course, our guest last episode raised uh, $260,000 for her Uber driver whose daughter has cancer uh, and has overcome cancer. Insane. But after sharing that story, uh, which was a great story, I had a good conversation with Becca, um, I got DMs from people saying that wasn't like the full story. So that's why we're here uh, in part to maybe correct the record. Yeah, so I just want to preface that uh, the outcome of this story is amazing. 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 I'm glad the Uber driver's daughter uh, got all that money that I, that, I Becca hate raised. that we live in that world where you have to raise money for medical costs. Yeah. That's a separate issue. Yeah. I hate that we're championing that, but mm-hmm. given that's what it is, yeah, great, great outcome there. And, uh, but I just want to come on here and say, Becca may not necessarily be a bad person, but the story is fabricated. It is a lie. Uh, There's not an ounce of truth to it. And I just wanted to come on and basically uh, correct it because in the beginning she said she was never going to expose me as the one that robbed her. And yes, I'm the one that accidentally ended up with her phone. The the same type of phone we all have, right? Same one. Same one. iPhone 12 or whatever the hell. iPhone 12. 
And so, so what's that, what's going on? Are you trying to, uh, you know, are you canoodling? Everyone's uh, hanging out at Coachella. Like, what's the vibe? Yeah. Like? So we were at Revolve Fest uh, which about three years ago. Is a sight to see. Is a sight to see. A lot of influencers. <laughs> a lot of Beckers. How there. did you get into Revolve Fest? Oh, what do you think? I just know you're just a lot looking of good. Right. Come on, the thighs were out. Yeah, that's what, okay, that's what it was. The six inch inseam shirts. Yeah. So okay. me and my buddy Joe Torgerson, who was on X on the Beach with me back in the day, we were at a bar flirting it up with some girls and stuff, and everyone was pretty buzzed right and I met Becca and uh, we were just chit-chatting up for about five ten minutes I took a selfie on her phone right and then everyone was pretty sloppy especially her uh, but that's no excuse and then I must have accidentally put the phone in my pocket okay. didn't touch her purse didn't touch her wallet didn't touch anything else and soon and this is the last day of the festival on Sunday right so as soon as I left the festival uh, at Revolve Fest I was heading to Coachella and I realized the phone was in my pocket. I was like, shit. So I instantly, I didn't have her number or anything. So I DM. Since this is how many hours later, do you think? This is about probably an hour, literally on the way back to the car. Okay, so it's in the office. Oh my gosh. Gotcha. So we're on the way to the festival. So I'm, I'm going to stop by the Airbnb I was at and drop off her phone. And I DM'd her mm -hmm. saying, hey, this is the address of the house. I'm sorry I had your phone. Here is where it's going to be. It's going to be outside on the ledge or whatnot, right? Uh, and had th didn't get a DM ever until the next day, saying, "Oh my God!" Uh, and I have the receipts. Wait, how do you, who did I'm sorry, who did you text? Because you had her. Phone I didn't. I DM'd her account. Oh, so you were hoping that she would she go would on go her, on her friends or got something. You, got you. But I guess all her. Yeah, friends, what else can you do at that right, point? All you, you could do. So I guess all her friends. Oh yeah, go ahead, bud. Uh, all her friends left that day, so she was alone that night, staying in her hotel room. Mm -hmm. Right. Put this back up just for yeah. Uh, so the next day she thought I stole her phone. So she was freaking out the DMs. I was like, no, here it is. This and that. Uh, and then she found her phone and it was over. And she said that her Uber driver saved her because he was driving her around free of charge. And then she finally logged into her Instagram on his phone to get the message. And they finally, like, I even like talked to her the next day. I'm like, Hey, are you heading back today? Do you need a ride after that? And she was like, no, I'm good. So. Because then, a lot of times when you expose yourself as like that guy, it would be not a good look for you. But if you're not hiding anything. No, I was not hiding anything at all. Not hiding anything at all. Ooh, Vinny Fastline. Left back. There you go, buddy. <laughs> so, uh, and then like a week or two later, I see this. T my friend sends me this TikTok about robbed at Coachella. Hey, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. Oh, listen, it's Don't a great it. story and a great outcome, and I'm glad it happened. I just want to make sure <laughs> Becca Moore is no longer considered a martyr. Okay. Right? So she, she did it for clout, and that's bottom line. She did it for clout. Becca, you did it for clout, and I'm sorry. Hey, there you go. So police raided the Airbnb? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Well, they had the little What are you talking about? In the news that she got from this, it was like... It was crazy. Forbes. And I reached out to the ABC reporter and I was like, hey, this is what really happened. And Becca told me, she was like, hey, she blocked me at first okay. and then unblocked me. She was like, hey, I never mentioned your name. I never told the reporter anything. It went, the money getting raised went to a good cause. And I was like, you know what? You're right. No harm, no fall. It's a good story. Nothing will ever be traced back to me by accident until she came on your podcast and mentioned, which she specifically asked you to bleep out, correct? Yeah, small world. Small world. That, uh, I, she got robbed by a reality star who's on Fuckboy Island. When I heard that bleeped out, I was like, oh, okay. So now you want me to expose you. So that's why I came on. So you feel like she flew a little too close to the sun with little linking, too close. linking her story I was, to yeah, the reality. Yeah, a little too close. Well, I get that because people will narrow that down. And people get excited, right? And they were like, find out who this guy is. And yeah. look, well, in the end, it sounds like the Uber driver was was operating off of all of good faith and his daughter no longer has cancer and got Oh, amazing. So, I'm glad so the outcome happened. But I just very, want people to know that, Becca, you are not... Uh, the most innocent girl in the world, and you did a lot of that for clout. So an F girl, you're saying? An F girl, yeah. She could star on F girl island. That'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad we I'm <laughs> glad we cleared that up because I I didn't want, uh, you know, as a neutral party. Yeah. I'm just kind of like you. You deserve to share your side if if the like sort of the connective tissue does ever get back to you. Oh, for sure. Because you're only gonna have your career being going, you know, whatever. So even than, if I did rob it, why would I? 
voluntarily come on as soon as I saw that and explain the truth. And then it's easy for people to expose yeah. tweets, to, to receipts to make you look bad. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's move on. So did you have a good time at Coachella? <laughs> besides that, I did. Yeah. Besides the, the next week was good. What's dating like after F boy? Are you, uh, after are you, Coachella? Uh, I thought you were... <laughs> are, are you, uh, getting, a, are you uh, getting uh, folks sliding in your DMS? Are you getting any iPhone sponsorships from the, uh, no, no, exam? not yet. Unfortunately, I thought I'd get more of a following. To be honest, mm. I don't know if it's because it switched networks and it was already established. Well, on it's HBO. a slow world right now for Bachelor, and that used to be like a guaranteed. Oh, myth. really? It was a guaranteed milli, and now it's like barely two hundred thousand you get from it, and that's if you're the lead. And so I've I've got people that were on Bachelor that only got ten thousand. So it's I think it's like the the audiences on TikTok and Instagram it's fragmented. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's a little bit um, a few years off of like the quarantine high where everyone was reaping the followers. Yeah. Do you ever, have you ever done reality? No. No? Would you watch no. it? No. I mean, I'm kind of boring now. Um, I would do maybe something... I would do like a Survivor. Yeah. I would do something... Are you good at that shit? Are you I, like no, an Eagle Scout? No. No, no, no. My brothers were all like Boy Scouts, but I was... My mom was... I was at a single mom, and she, I don't think she could afford Boy Scouts at the time. So like when she remarried, my younger brothers got to do all this cool stuff. Like, So it's so emasculating when I'm like... My brother's 10 years younger than me, and I'm like, you got to start the fire, bro. <laughs> you gotta, uh -huh. like, I knew nothing. I had, no, I had none, none of that. Um, but I, I do love, like, survival-style shows. Mm. Um, I've had some friends on... Uh, do you know Doug Key? Doug Key, no. He's from my hometown, and he's a, a comic. He runs a... He's from uh, Yeah, he runs um, Rogue Island Comedy Festival and opens for Mark Norman, so... No way. Yeah, he's a good love connection Mark. to have. By the way, we should do um, we should do like a show in New England sometime. We could probably I'm so put so theater together. C.J. Marinin opens... Because we have that comedy connection in Rhode Island. Yeah. So C.J. Marinin opens up for Caroline Ray. So him and I were talking about doing a weekend of shows in February next week with maybe this guy, Michael Inochi, who I went to Tampa with. I know Michael. Oh, yeah. Pretty funny. Uh, he's a unique sense of humor. <laughs> Uh, are you going to be around um, after Christmas or are you going back home? I'm going to Tampa because both my parents live there now uh, for a week and then I'm coming back for New Year's and I'll be here. I was going to say, if you're here the 28th, I have a show, but I don't know if you're 28th of December. December? I may. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm moving uh, mid January to Nashville. I bought a home in Nashville. Whoa. Yeah, big change. You um, look like a Nashville guy. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, like the, the baby's on the way and we just needed to buy a home and do mm -hmm. something different. We've been here for 10 years. Uh, my wife and I work in, you know, film entertainment, acting, stuff like that. But yeah, I just, you know, my own journey, I was like, well, after I did a, some spots in Nashville, I was like, oh, I can get around the South. Yeah. There's a lot of driving distance gigs you can get to, so. Is this still as cheap as it should be? Because Nashville is pretty popular now. Prices like, have like gone Austin up. Austin has gone up a lot. Prices have gone up a lot. Like yeah. the home we bought, we probably could have gotten three years ago for like a quarter million less, but it's still quadruple the size of what we could have got here and better on taxes, which, you know, all, all those little things, it's just, it's a decision we made, but I don't regret it. It will, we'll be, I'll be back in Los Angeles. It's just like yeah. this post pandemic world. It's kind of like go wherever the hell you need to go. When are you leaving? Uh, I think we're leaving January 10th. Oh, and okay. it's going to be about a week drive for me. Cause I'm going to have all my gear, all like a full 26 foot U-Haul and yeah. it's going to be a mess. Like just a, but we close on the 18th. Wait, when's the baby due? May 1st, my birthday. So oh. we, we have a while. Oh, May baby. Nice but we're going to go from like 700 square feet to 3,000. And it's just a... What? You know what I mean? It's going to be... It's just like a... You get a big home Same price? No. Well, now I rent. So it's yeah. going to like... It's going to... It's going to be triple the mortgage from what I pay in rent. But there's more tax write-offs when you buy. So... Yeah. I've just like talked to That's Mike. insane. The it's amount insane. of like what you can get bang for your buck in other places in the freaking country. Yeah. So that's where I'll be kind of like, you know, posting up my main podcast studio and then traveling for guests. And that's the, awesome, and dude. For stand-up shows and stuff Never like that. Never been in Nashville. Oh, it's great. Yeah, there's a there's a great scene out there. But um, so what's, what's uh, let's talk about your career. Where do you, where like, where are you going? What's mm -hmm. the overall vision that you have now that, F Boy Island's kind of over and you got what you got out of it and all that. Yeah, because I was always hesitant on doing reality TV because the acting stuff I mentioned before, but I thoroughly enjoy being myself, um, my unapologetic self. Um, so I love making people laugh. So I would really like to maybe start a mini tour in comedy, uh, get my uh, feet in the water on that one. And continue to develop my podcast, a little Smoochie Town action. Smoochie Town. Smoochie Town. That's right. 
Smoochie uh, Town. And that's uh, basically about what I did at Coachella a lot, you know, bring girls to Smoochie Town. You got to do that. Uh, but no, basically bad date stories, and I interview my guests, which I'll have you on before you take off to Amazing. Nashville. Uh, and basically just shoot the ship, you know, uh, unfiltered you, nonsense. You know, that's what's interesting. Uh, pretty much all my guests, we, we usually end up talking about building building that equity and that ownership over what you do. Yeah. And with comedy or no matter what you do in life, being able to make decisions that work for you and not not having to like take a writing gig if you don't want to do that. You know, like mm. it used to be you just had to do these certain gigs because they paid well. And now everyone's figuring it out, whether it be, you know, stand up comedy clips or podcasts or all that. And it's really about just having control in a world that otherwise gives you no control. Like you show up to auditions, yeah. you don't get any say other than you go on the dotted line and you, you, you give them your take and then you walk out feeling like shit because you don't know what happened, right? Yeah, and it's like, oh my God, I did shitty. But usually those ones are the best ones. Yeah. So you, can't, you gotta go in the room, do your fucking interpretation of the character or job and then leave it and forget about it. Now, how did you get the role in Havana? Was it oh, called Havana? Havana? Ooh, nah, nah. What a great song. Camila, Camila Cabello. Camila Cabello. Yeah, dude, this is a good story. So when I first came out here, I was with Daniel Hoff Agency. This has really no uh, purpose to the story. But <laughs> uh, I self-submitted on a LA, LA casting. It's a casting that works kind of like a submission platform mm -hmm. you can as an actor. And self-submitted for a music video a role of a telenovela soap opera leading man. And I got the audition. I went to do it. Didn't think anything of it. A week later, they were like, hey, you got to come to set tomorrow. I don't know if someone dropped out. Dude, was it the chest hair? I don't know. I had a you little fucking you hamburger. You looked like a I little, had, you I, know? I played two characters. Juan and Rodrigo. There you go. And the funniest part is that it's the third most watched music video in YouTube history behind Hips Don't Lie by Shakira and Baby by Justin Bieber. It has 1.4 billion views. That's insane. And uh, it was a SAG buyout yep. rate of $750. That's it. That's all there you got. And on the day of, se of fucking on set. Welcome to the YouTube. <laughs> on set, Dave Myers, who's a fucking very famous music video director. Yeah. He goes, hey, can you do a Spanish accent? And I was like, it is I. <laughs> Camila. And I know they're like, perfect, we're gonna use it. Yeah. And then they're yeah, it was good. And it was the first minute of the music video. Like it was the only actual acting part. But it won a VMA, it won a Grammy. Noah Centineo was thanked, Lele Pons was thanked for their contributions oh, to yeah, the video. Lele Pons but I was never was mentioned. Nice. And I'm in the fucking beginning. There you go. No love here. No love, Camila, come on now. Do you think Marco Del Vecchio? I mean, that's a great name. Uh, dude, I think girls would kill for that Is last Is that your name. real name? Del Marco Valerio Del Vecchio stop, Jr. Stop, <laughs> One wasn't enough. Full Italian, baby. That's so come Italian. on, all the O's. I literally just had like a carbo binge listening <laughs> to that name. That's, do you need a, are you, would, would you prefer to find an Italian lady or like, what's your preference? Uh, I like... Uh, European for sure or like South America I just like a little spice there. okay yeah uh, tanner skin kind of brunette hair you know uh, and just like a little attitude and those options obviously how to cook and stuff because my mom you know I just read an article that said men I've read an, I read a headline that said men like a woman who uh, they can annoy a little bit because it's like they get then they give you like some spice back yeah I was like and I looked at my wife and I was like Man, that nails it. I just, oh, really? I'll get bored and start prying her. You know, just like flirt. That's yeah. how, flirting and annoying are literally yeah. the same thing, whether or not the other person's receptive. Like, one's more like, <laughs> like you or not. Yeah, bro. So like, what, so like flirting, it, when you're in a relationship, the general trope is over time is that people will get annoyed with your bullshit. Like whatever made my wife laugh, now she's like, all right, I don't buy a shtick anymore. But it's like, I didn't change. You yeah, just, you exactly. Just got, you just learned my magic tricks. But how'd you get your wife? Because it's just like, I hate dating in LA because the game of dating, acting disinterested to get someone interested, that playful back and forth, the chase, as much as people want to admit or don't want to admit that like, oh, I don't like to play games, everyone does because it's innate in your fucking self. You want what you can't have naturally in life. Yeah. And I get mad that girls play that, but deep down, if a girl's all over me and not kind of like already like gives me everything I want right off the rip, then I'm like, eh. It's a know? fire. Like you can't, you can't start a fire with a blowtorch. Like you could like, if it was a little bit, but you have to like. You can't be too much too early. Too on, e on either side. It's yeah. kind of got to be like, 
And what happened was we actually met on a mini series called Mildred Pierce, uh, which oh, shot really? on HBO with um, um, who was in it, Kate Winslet and Guy Ritchie, all these people. Let's go. And um, we just met and didn't really stay in touch. And then several years later, she was a huge bitch to me. And <laughs> no turns out, oh, horrible. <laughs> bitch, bitch is the kind you of- You were like, fuck, I want her. She knows it. It's so funny to hear both of our stories because they couldn't be farther apart. But I met her on 33rd and 3rd Street. I walked onto the bus because when you are when you commute to Long Island for like a SAG project, they bus you out and you, you get paid for the commute. So I get on the bus at like 5 a.m. and I just see this woman with these beautiful big eyebrows. And I was just like, whoa i was literally blown out of the water by her and then yeah. and then i kind of wore it down we talked throughout the day and then i got lunch with her and like uh you know she was just kind of annoyed to be there i don't think it had anything to do with me didn't really stay in touch a couple years later i moved out here and long story short we just became friends and um i kind of got to know each other kind of friendly wise and every every tool that i had that was like knowing if a woman was interested in me was kind of off with her i knew she was interested in me but at the same time i was questioning it because she wouldn't want us to like cross the friendship and i think okay. with a beautiful woman like that she was just extra guarded because every guy's trying to score do you know so I mean? you never made the move. And I made a few. Her? I made a few moves, and then she'd like back away, and I'd be like, "Dude, we're we're on the roof of my house watching the sunset. If this wasn't the move, like every single time, yeah. I like, I it was like I made the moves I was supposed to make, and yet I was still kind of getting rejected. And mm. then and then it kind of just it kind of one day she like she, I, she went from. And I think it's now I've learned she's like super introverted, and I think a lot of emotions were happening on the inside of her head. And I think after the initial kind of like after she kind of understood we're, we're progressing from our friendship, she turned on a dime, and all of a sudden we're just dating. There was almost no in between oh. part from from like my from yeah. yeah, like immediately like very serious, and that was in my late twenties. And we've been together for for about ten years now. That's um, awesome. And then yeah, we kind of like you know stalled on on the baby and all these other things just because it's L.A. and we're all trying to figure ourselves out. But we've been serious like living together almost immediately. Oh wow. And yeah, I just I just kind of had to trust my gut that there was more to the friendship than 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 what was happening. And in any other past relationship, I would have moved on. I was always kind of just like looking for the next fling. And yeah. this was the first time I was like really invested in figuring it out. And I think that resonated with her because, you know, well, we're having a kid. <laughs> That's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm happy for you. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, but you got a lot of time, man. You're you got a lot of time. Out hopefully, here. man. I'm just I wear my heart in my sleeve. Hope it's romantic. So hopefully, uh, I snatch someone up soon. I think that's the way to do it. I think you have to be you have to be like not afraid to like say if you're into somebody and if you scare yeah. them away. A lot of times, like it's like, well, that's your issue. I'm you know you be open and honest with what you want to do. And if that doesn't work, steal their iPhone. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, thanks for doing the podcast. Man. Oh my god, what a uh, call! Everyone back. check out yeah, right, right, right on the reverse. Everyone check out is it Smoochie Town. Smoochie Town, Smoochie Pod, Town podcast. Marco Del Vec, and then watch Fuck Boy Island if you haven't. Amazing. All right, buddy. Thanks again. Thanks, Marjorie. Yeah, man. All right, Appreciate let's take it. a selfie or something. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks for doing it. All right, everyone. I've thought about it, and we hear both sides of the story. So I wanted to give my own judicial response here. Marco uh, was operating in good faith. And at the same time, it looked like Becca, you know, had her phone taken. It just turns out at the moment, maybe she thought it was stolen then found out it wasn't afterwards. The story may have been heightened for the sake of uh, exposure. In the end, that exposure led to a quarter million dollars in medical fees, uh, going to a very good man and a good family. And I can understand why Marco wanted to share his side since she did say it was a reality star and he didn't want people doing all this investigative work to find out what's him. He just says, it was me, but that's not the full story. All right, so we can all move on with our life. Both are good people.